I think Labradorite, when you think about it, is as beautiful as a diamond because it gives you, for me, more amazement than a diamond. You look at it and it does something really unexpected, like a lightning bolt. Labradorite is one of those gemstones from Jewelry Maker that is always going to be a top seller. The Labradorite that you get from Jewelry Maker has got extreme amounts of labradorescence. The colour saturation is just superb and that's really indicative of the quality that we can get for you here at Jewelry Maker. Um, it seems to reflect your moods as well, whatever kind of mood you're in, whatever you put it with, it seems to bring out those gorgeous colours so it really is a true chameleon gemstone. Get involved with Jewelry Maker by sending the studio a message during our live hours. You can send a text to 60777 and start your message with JM Studio or, alternatively, go to our website and click on Watch the Live Show. Simply type your message into the box and press Send. Make sure you stay tuned in case your message is read out. Get interactive with Jewelry Maker. When shopping with Jewelry Maker, you can add as many items to your order in one day and only pay one postage and packaging charge. We have two delivery options. Standard delivery at just £2.95 and you'll receive your parcel within four to six days. Or opt for our premium delivery at just £4.95 and you'll receive your parcel within three to four days. Happy shopping with Jewelry Maker. Good afternoon everybody or oh, good evening if you're watching at night. Thank you very much for joining me. My name is Becky and if you are still on the phone for those two strands of emerald for £7.85, stay where you are. I have got a handful left. I started with over 100. There's about a minute queue on the phone but it's going to be worth the wait as, as you know. I am joined today by the wonderful Teresa. Hello, how Hello. are you? I'm fine, thank you. Now I know you've been with us quite a while now, but maybe for someone who's just tuning in, we've had loads of new people today, give us a little bit of a summary, who you are. Um, oh, hi, I'm Teresa. Um, <laughs> I've been making jewellery since I was a teenager, um, varying um, types. Actually, I did start with gemstones, but I mean, the kind of the undrilled kind of things that um, I, I wire wrapped actually. Mm -hmm. um, and then a few years ago, I sort of thought, right, I'm going to get into jewellery making a bit more. Um, but there wasn't any gemstones around until I discovered um, jewellery maker. Um, so I was using a lot of glass um, and then uh, moved into to gemstones um, and wire, really. So, yeah. So you've, it's, it's, a rel it's something you've done for a long time, but relatively recently working with gemstones themselves. Um, yeah, yeah, in um, kind of bead form. In bead form. Um, yes, yeah. Um, and I like to kind of dabble with lots of different um, mediums, lots of different styles as well. So um, just see what works, really, have a play. Now, on Designer Inspirations, what we do is we send our lovely guest designers a kit a week or so in advance, and they get a little bit of time to play with it and make some gorgeous creations. And what we like to do is we don't only show you step by step how to create some of the pieces, but we also like to offer you the kit so that you are able to make the pieces at home yourself. So make a note of today's date. You can watch us back on our Jewelry Maker YouTube page. And today, you will be learning how to make some of these stunning springtime creations. Isn't that so springtime? Yeah, which designer are we thinking of, ladies and gentlemen? Yep, looks like that a bit, doesn't <laughs> it? <laughs> and you've got a beautiful ring and pair of earrings to match the pieces as well. So, out of your kit, did you, um, what did you think when you first saw the kit all together? Uh, I, I mean, I think they're lovely. Um, I, I particularly asked for the different colours of wire because mm -hmm. um, I quite like using different colours. But I think up until now, I've sort of put the copper and the silver and the antique bronze and the silver and the silver and the gold. Um, and I thought, no, actually, I'm going to go with some of the, um, the, the proper colours, um, if you like, the fresher colours. Um, and yeah, when I kind of saw them, I just thought, wow, that is really going to work. I got that kind of springtime idea in mind. Yeah. Um, then of course I opened the gemstones and it was, yeah, 
um, love at first sight. I think they just go so well together. It all just clicks, doesn't yeah. it? So let's start off with what you're getting. You're going to be getting 40 metres of wire, three gemstone strands and a finding pack. One mil, 10 metres of pink wire. 10 metres of 0.4 in the pink. 10 metres of 1 mil in the gold. And 10 metres of 1 mil in your chartreuse. You've also got the gold findings pack. So in here, this is the one that's got all those lovely, um, you've got the twisted jump rings, you've got the um, flat based head pins, you've got a long length of the gold chain, you've got in there as well 15 of the ball head pins, the, the thin ones, the featherweight ones. Everything you can see on screen is what you'll be getting in this findings pack today, including of course the handmade gemstone jewellery organza bag. But let's get to the fun bit, my favourite bit, the gemstones themselves. Three strands in here and wow, do they pop. You've got in here your strand of the faceted rose quartz, 80 carats worth of this. These are your six mil rounds. You've also got in here 120 carats of your green fluorite in these faceted puffy coins, eight mil these are. And finally, you have got this really wonderful coated strand of quartz. My carat weight on this strand is 100 carats. Wow. 100 carats worth on this strand. STGC32 is today your discount code. If you were to buy all of this separately online now, you'll be paying 44 pounds and 10 pence for the three strands, the four reels and the findings pack. STGC32, it's your discount code. If you type that in before nine o'clock, you won't be paying 44 pounds 10. But this discount code has an expiry. You've got to use it now, today, to get this bundle for just 27 pounds and 95 pence today. That is a massive saving of, hang on, let's try and do some maths here. Uh, what is it, 15, 16, Tracy, you're not helping. No, I'm not. <laughs> 16 pounds, 15 pence, the computer says. That's a stunning saving. What do you think of that? I, I, I think it's brilliant. I mean, I think it's a brilliant um, price for the, um, the stones that you get and the, the wire that you get. Um, and I think it's so nice to have the, um, the 10 mil, uh, the 10 metre reels mm. of different colours. You can just have a bit of a play with, really. Yes. So what you could do is if you thought about splitting it up into sections, say into three, you'd be only paying £9.30 for your findings, £9.30 for all this wire, and £9.30 for all the gemstones. If you think of it like that, it just goes to show what a massive saving you're getting. Yeah. And how much would you look at, say, selling one of these pieces for? I actually have no idea how I would kind of um, cost them up. Mm -hmm. um, it's so different to um, the stuff that I've done before as well. Yeah. Um, that uh, I haven't even kind of gotten that, <laughs> that far to figure it out. Um, I mean, you'd probably for the necklaces, you'd have to be talking 20, 30 pound before you begin thinking about it really. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, so one of the necklaces, I guess you'd be um, be paying for the, the kit really. So for a suite with, the, with all of these, for a suite of this, uh, this collection, you'd be paying what? 50, 60? Pounds possibly, for the yeah. full suite, so you can make your money back 
even technically just by selling two of these yeah. pieces one even one necklace yeah. 27 pounds and 95 pence. It's your designer inspiration spring blossom today. Those people on the phone lines, please do check it out for me because there's about six of you that I can see on there that aren't checking it out. Make sure you do. Your discount code is only for a limited time. STGC32. You're saving over 16 quid on this. 27 pounds and 95 pence for you today. So, lovely Teresa, where are we starting? Um, well, I thought I'd start with the um, the flowers, really, from the necklace. Yes. Um, and how to put those together, because um, it's a, a bit of a kind of a difference. Um, it, it was one technique that I knew of before, and then I kind of expanded on it as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought we'd kind of start there, and obviously, um, well, maybe not all of, obviously actually, um, in order to make them you need jump rings, so you need to make your jump rings out mm -hmm. of the wire. Um, I thought I'd just kind of run through um, a couple of bits really um, about making the, the jump rings themselves. Okay. Um, for the larger flowers um, I've used a 10 millimeter mandrel um, and the smaller ones use the 8 millimeter mandrel um, which unfortunately, well fortunately for me I've got both of them, um, <laughs> it's the two um, the two versions of the jump ring maker. Okay. Um, so this is the smallest one of the, um, the larger um, set. Um, it's the 10 mil, um, whereas the other one's the, the largest one of the smaller set. Okay. Um, but that just seemed to be what worked for the, the flowers for me. Um, and I'm, I'm quite sold on the gizmo, I have to admit. I'm quite into making coils with the, with the gizmo. Um, so obviously this, you haven't got something to kind of hold the, the mandrel in. Um, you're having to kind of hold it yourself. Um, and I found um, really just I needed to play around with how to get the tension in order to get a decent coil to, to be able to cut. Mm -hmm. um, and so actually the, the top tip um, for that is to cut a piece of wire first. Okay. Um, and then pop it through the hole um, in the, uh, the jump ring maker. Okay. Um, and then spiral it round. Try and kind of move it round, hold it, hold it and the wire um, and move it round. Um, rather than wrapping the wire around because you don't tend to get as tight a coil. Um, so that is the, the tightest sort of way of doing that. I will be bringing you this tool in a moment or four. Oh, no, just because I said that, I've managed to sort of go off a bit. <laughs> um, I have to admit, I've, I'm double jointed. So there is a, a way that I can hold it that I don't think there's any point in demonstrating because I don't think anybody else would be able, would be to, able to do that. To. Um, <laughs> so this isn't the way I normally do it, but um, it is just trying to kind of hold both the wire and the mandrel, but keep the wire straight. Maybe if you just kind of held it on that, that hand. Um, no, that won't work. Um, so, but try and get your coil as tight as you can make it. Yeah. Um, it just seems to work if you take the, the wire off of the coil, um, off of the, the reel. Um, to, to actually make that um, and then once you've got um, once you've finished your, your wire up um, you can just kind of unhook it from that hole and pop through um, and then and just to kind of take the two ends off and you've got your coil ready to cut into jump rings okay um, I saw cut my jump rings um, but you could just sort of go in with the um, the pliers and, and put them. Um, for this design, you may find some of the um, the joins are um, out. You can sort of move it around to, to hide them all. Um, so it is worth kind of sawing them rather than um, actually snipping them. snipping them just to have the flushest. Cut I've got the joint. saw coming up in moments. Let me bring to you this tool first though. So this is your jump ring maker, and this one's been opened, so they're <laughs> falling on me. Well, that's handy. Just get them all out. <laughs> so you've got in here, these are your four sized mandrels. So these, talk us through how we attach this. Um, you, um, i just undo uh, mine. Actually, I might have my smaller one to show you. Um, Take that one out. Um, you've got the um, plastic uh, sort of handle mm -hmm. um, with a little nut um, embedded in it um, mm -hmm. and a little bit of screw thread yeah. um, in it. Um, and obviously the mandrel comes with a, um, a thread on it. So all you need to do um, is take both of them and screw that in. Um, this one's a bit tight. But, um, and 
you're good to go actually that's it mm. um, and then all you're needing to do um, in order to start is poke the the end of the wire through that little hole bend it down um, and then you and can then be you begin starting with your your coiling so I've got in here the four different mand mandrel shapes I've got the four mil I've got the six mil the seven mil and the eight millimeter these are the mandrels you've also got in there your little um, twister as well and it's one of my favorite ever tools it's the jump ring opener. Yes. How amazing is this tool? I think it's fab. Yeah. How do yeah. you feel about it? It is, and actually, I, I, I got here today. I haven't brought mine with me. Um, for this particular design, it's absolutely perfect as well. Um, it makes things a lot quicker to to put them together um, with it. Um, I must admit, when I'm using kind of the really small jump rings, making kind of chain mail, um, I tend to open them with, all with that. Um, and then faff about with you know two pairs of pliers to close them, um, but um, for this one uh, you can close it. You can close them with it as well. It is so simple to use. This is by far my favourite tool. If you are going to be tuning in for the chainmail tomorrow um, with Debbie B, then this honestly is absolutely essential for chainmail. Yeah. So essentially, if you think about opening a jump ring, normally you'll have to get two pliers and you'll have to open them like this, won't you? And then you'll have to put down the two pliers and lift it up. But with this, it's so much easier. Take a look at this. Bear with. He's trying to find it. I'll get your price in then. <laughs> RAGC for the ring mandrel and the ring opener, £6.95. So all you do is squeeze it together. Look, how easy is that? Very short, but sweet. It's just so simple. Yeah. It saves you picking up two and opening and putting them back down to get another one and opening yeah. back up. It's literally dunk, dunk. Yeah, I have to. I think I had one. Um, I got one in a, um, a bundle of, of other bits and pieces, mm. and I didn't really think I needed it. I've got two pairs of pliers. I can per manage perfectly well with that. Um, and it is amazing how much quicker it is. Um, so it was one of those things. I never realised I needed it until I had one. <laughs> yeah, it is one of those tools that you think, well, I can do without, but it makes life so much easier yeah. you think how did i two goodies for you today 16 left in total this is going to be a sellout six pounds and 95 pence for these it's so simple it's so easy to use get your hands on the jump ring maker and the jump ring opener and i will bring you as well the saw and saw blades too five of these left for you so talk to us about sawing these um, do you want me to do you want me to attempt to attempt yes to I would um, love that because two I've got left <laughs> one left it's a sellout six pounds 95 pence for you let's get back in your bundle do you want to do the saw now yeah so if you want to show us how yep. to do the um, saw right <laughs> right now um, this may go badly wrong. No, um, it won't. <laughs> because it does take a little bit more care and attention. The larger the rings, the more difficult it is to kind of hold them in there, the more they want to kind of flip around. Mm -hmm. And what I, I was just trying to do, kind of pu pushing it together, um, it does have a little bit of a habit of kind of going askew mm -hmm. as well. So you've got to be very careful with it. Um, having said that, I will try it. Um, one thing, one sort of tip to, um, to try, normally when I'm cutting jump rings, I'll try and make that top um, piece as small as possible so I'm actually starting quite close to that yeah but it will wiggle around all over the place so I'm not going to worry about that I'm going to place them in the the pliers um, so actually that end um, or the, the first coil is gripped both sides mm -hmm. um, just put it a bit further down we will um, bring the coil cutting pliers to you as well in a moment um, and then the other thing um, I, I think I, I I differ slightly um, in the way that I, I cut them than I've seen um, seen Debbie do. Um, Debbie kind of cuts upwards, um, absolutely fine, works perfectly well. Um, I tend to cut kind of downwards. Okay. Um, the the cutting sort of side of the teeth um, is on the the push rather than the, the pull of the cut. Yeah. Um, and because I know this is going to w wiggle around a little bit, um, what I tend to do, and I'll try and sort of um, angle it a little bit so you can kind of see where where I'm at. Um, is I, I tend to just sort of see if I can hold it with my um, my finger, my fingernail. Um, obviously, it's not going getting anywhere near the blade. Um, and then it's just getting that started, which it doesn't want to do. There we go. 
Um, and if you can do it really quickly, that's absolutely fantastic. Um, it's not worth um, trying it. Um, just take your just, time with just it. Just take your you? time with them. You can see that it's just wiggling about a little bit. So I've put my um, finger back on there just to, to stop it. And I'm actually down um, a number of them already. Yeah, you've um, already gone through. The, the only thing you need to, to watch is you don't start sawing kind of this side of it with that technique. No. Um, and so then I will just kind of take look. them out. Got a couple done. And these, there's a few of them that we've gone through here. Mm. But have a look. This is so cut. That when it locks into place, that is a flush line, isn't it? Yeah. So this is going to be secure if you're doing something like um, your chain rail or these designs that we're going to be doing today. I'm going to offer you the saw blades and the saw now. What a saucy offer. Producer Pip names that one. <laughs> um, this is your saw frame. Now the saw frame itself is really very, very easy to use. You have the adjustable handle here. All you have to do is open up these loops here, place the blade in, close them up, and then you have the adjustable handle, which is fab because, as with everything, saw blades sometimes, maybe if you go in with a thinner blade than you should and it might snap, or perhaps you've had it for ages and ages and it snaps, it's not the end of the world because you can just lower this down and you can still use just half of the blade. It's fab for that reason. And you're gonna get the saw blades as well. So in here, it goes from numbers one to six. And one is the thickest and six is the thinnest. So what we say is perhaps you might wanna use around a one or a two if you're gonna be working with perspex. But if you want to do jump rings, what number did you use for this jump ring? Um, I had a feeling it was a two zero, but I might be wrong. Yeah, yeah, it could be. be. Could it be, be a, a, a two one. or a three. Yeah. So there's loads that you can do with this. And the thing is, it's all for different yeah. mediums. And you can have a little look online and you'll know exactly um, which ones to use what for. This is your saw blade assortment. You're going to be getting 24 in e all together of the saw blades. The saving is huge, should be, for these two, £16.90, which for a professional jewellery making blade is exceptional. This isn't a normal one that you'd get down the hardware shop. £16.90 to £8.95 today. I told you it was going to be a serious saving. I have got something for every pocket today. There is loads of you getting on the phones for this. And what I would say is if you are interested in creating this design, or perhaps you want to do things like the chain mail, then this really is an essential. essential. And also, once you to make your own jump rings, you're going to be saving a lot of money on the jump rings that you have to normally buy, aren't you? Yeah. Well, I just found it so difficult when you've you've got a particular pattern that you want to make, um, and you know you've got what mill wire around, um, but actually finding jump rings that are the right um, ratio. Mm. Um, if you want like, like two different ones in the same um, same wire. Um, you can actually just make them yourselves, which is why I've got um, all of the gizmos um, and all of the, the jump ring makers because I've got you know as many mandrels as I, I can manage. Yeah. Um, so I've got all the different sizes to be able to, to make jump rings out of. Fab. And it, is, it just saves time, effort and money. Half of my stock's gone on this though, of course. It's a cracking discount. £8.95. pence. What a saucy offer. <laughs> saw and saw blades and i've also got the coiling pliers they are coming up for you in a moment now stay where you're on the phone lines three six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen someone else just come in sixteen of you waiting for that stay where you are for the saw blades we'll bring those on at the bottom in a little bit but now let's give you the coil cutting pliers. This is what we've seen lovely Teresa using. You've seen how easy it is to do. If you maybe missed that or you just want to get these home and then see exactly how to use them, watch this back on YouTube. Alternatively, do have a little look on uh, Debbie Bulford's Facebook page and she's got a tuition on there as well that'll direct you to it. These are your professional coil cutting pliers. It gives you instructions on the back of exactly how you can use them. Yours today for just £14.95? No. 
that's the price it is on the website, we're going to do your designer inspiration discounts. They're just £11.95 for you today. SYVD83. There is, as always on designer inspirations, price slash all over the place today. £11.95 and your saucy offer saw blades, £8.95 are at the bottom of your screen. Fab. So we've made our jump rings. Yeah, I've made some jump rings. Um, and oh, I'll do the handy here's some I've made earlier. Very um, good. <laughs> now, basically, I just made um, same same size coils um, in both the gold wire um, and the pink, pink. wire. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I worked out for these ones, for the larger ones, um, if you um, had a meter of wire, it made about 25 jump rings, I mm -hmm. think, um, accounted for a little bit of waste as well. Mm -hmm. um, so 20 to 25, you've got no, no problem kind of making. Um, and each one of the flowers uses 15. Okay, brilliant. Um, so here's the really complicated bit. Um, I'm going to have to take, use both of my pliers because I haven't got my... Uh, um, my jump ring. Uh, Would thing. you like to use um, this one? Oh, wine. Go one. Treat yourself. It's too easy. Um, <laughs> if I can remember which which um, size to use. Um, so all I'm going to do is take one. It doesn't matter um, to wh which one. Um, take one um, and just cl oh. <laughs> close. Oh, having it said that, so how easy it is. I managed to um, start flipping them around. Um, oh, close it and just. Wiggle it into place so mm -hmm. it's it's oh, this isn't actually closed. As you can with these, do it with your finger. But yeah, um, so it's actually sort of closed. Fab. One done. Um, then the next one, you just pop through um, and close that one, um, and then just sort of stack them up. Oh, my finger's going to be in the way. Um, stack them up together. Um, so yeah, they're just sort of together. Take another um, of your jump rings, open that up, um, and pop that one through. Um, and then just sort of um, pop that where it, it needs to, where it sort of sits um, with the others, um, and keep going like that, basically. And each time you add one on, you go through all of them? Go through all of them. Um, what you'll find, um, if I just kind of uh, move to one that's got a yep. few on, um, if you drop it, if you kind of come out of, of place, um, what you'll find, it, it might sit so it's like that, mm -hmm. um, which is basically not right, not going to work to get it in. So all you need to do is kind of move them round. So, oh, and one so, they're, all layered so they're all sort of sitting nestling together. Um, sorry, my finger's a little bit in the way. Um, easy to, to do, sort of sitting down. Um, now this one, um, I've got nine on okay. so far. Um, and um, what you'll find is nine isn't enough. Um, I'll just find one of the, the beads I want to pop. I haven't got any loose. Uh, on the end of that strand, grab one. Um, because what I want to do is place that on and it kind of holds it um, but at the moment it will work itself through. straight through so it isn't actually holding anything. So you need um, 15. So you just keep going um, until you've got 15. Um, it doesn't matter what order you do the two colours in um, because you can actually, what I found is I, I, I was doing them alternately, um, picked it up and all of the yellow were in one side, all the gold was on one side, all the pink was in the other side. And it's like, okay, how did that so happen? Really order. doesn't matter. Um, if they do sort of all sit together, what you can then do is just sort of move one round a bit. And this has got a lot of gold on it anyway. Yeah, it um, and just get it how you want it to be. Um, so that's what it looks like when we've got um, the... 15 on there, just make sure it's sort of sitting nicely. Um, and then when you pop that one in, um, it's not actually going to, to go anywhere. Um, sometimes you'll find it looks a bit more um, kind of organic. Sometimes it sort of sits and looks really um, quite solid. You could carry on and put more jump rings on there um, and it just look more and more solid. Um, now this is what I've learned to do before and then basically it's held together by just putting um, some smaller jump rings through it. Okay. Um, however, that wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, so in order to um, get it sort of staying like that, if you if you just kind of had it, it would just sort of fall. Um, not much you can do about it. And I did have a little bit of a play as to what I wanted to do. Okay. Um, so next stage um, is to have the back of it um, sorted out, um, which is a little bit of the green wire. Um, this it's is the one mil. Uh, green, yeah, yeah, it's, it's um, yeah, it's the one mil chartreuse um, wire. Um, 
this is probably long, longer than you need, but I always seem to go longer than I need and then use links for the others. Um, 15 centimetres. Yeah, and all I went in um, is with my tip, tip of my round nose pliers, um, just hold it in place um, and then wind one of the wires round one side, one of the wires round the other and mm -hmm. just keep going um, a little bit. Um, take one sort of slightly over um, the uh, the, the last kind of coil yeah. um, and then what you've actually got is um, sorry a bit of a, a dip in there so that will actually sit in the the curve of the um, the jump rings okay. um, so it sort of sits down and just to get that so those are kind of nice um, and then that's going to be on the bottom um, of the flower um, and your gemstone is going to be on the top so what I then need is a little bit of the point four. And again, you don't need much. Back. So I'm just going to pop my bead on. Um, and I did use a bit of a combination of the um, of uh, these and the, the rose quartz ones. Mm -hmm. um, although these have just such such sparkle. I know. <laughs> and come up so. a bit of a magpie. I kept getting drawn to them. <laughs> Um, so all I've done with that is popped it through and then bent the two um, the two arms down and that is going to go through my rows. Be careful that you're, you do keep everything in, in place um, and take the two um, right through the centre of that, that rose um, that flower um, and make sure it's sort of sitting just how you, you want it to, yeah. to sit. Um, and then what you need to do is sort of holding all of that together, so, which is very useful TV because you can't actually see any of it. Um, splay those two wires out. 0.4. Um, actually, if I do that, I'll show you. Um, those two are sort of out um, the, the way that they're going, um, so they're not crossing over. Um, and actually, at that point, it is actually held quite solidly. Um, it is, these aren't sort of going to go anywhere. Um, so you can kind of put it down have a bit of a rest and not worry about it, um, come back to it. And then all I'm going to do is um, pop that um, sort of raised bit um, into that hole, um, hold it all together again, um, and then with each of these wires, wrap round um, the, the green a few times. Oh, try not to catch it onto the jump ring. So the green bit, the coil almost makes and keeps the centre gemstone proud and now you're just anchoring on. Well the, the gem, the gemstone is actually sitting in the, the nest made of the jump rings yeah. um, and this is doing the same job on the back. Yeah. Um, they probably don't meet, if they do it will just touch. Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't really matter if they, if they do or if they don't but it's just kind of um, anchoring those jump rings on from either base. side. Um, and then the only thing you've got to watch when you sort of start the next bit again is that you're not sort of releasing the tension from those jump rings just whilst you're doing it. Okay. Um, so normally I tend to leave all of my tails on until the end but I'll just pop them off um, now just so it's a bit easier to see what's going on. Um, and so that's what, where we're at at the moment. Yeah. Um, and then all I'm going to do is carry on coiling um, those two wires in the direction that they were. Um, so you just hold everything together whilst you're doing it um, and try to sort of do them in turn. My hands are a bit warm, um, so it's moving around rather than uh, the, the wires. Um, and try to keep that coil as tight um, as you, you can whilst you're doing it. Um, just to uh, the point where everything's sort of feeling solid, which this isn't at the moment, it's just going to be a pain for me today. Um, which is why, you know, actually this wire, I have used quite a lot of it. Um, so there's enough left then um, just to kind of do the, the, the end pieces. Um, and then all I'm going to do with those is um, chop them to a reasonable length. Oops. About a centimetre um, and a yeah, half, two centimetres. Yeah, about, about a centimetre and a half. It's, it's sort of a bit difficult to, to gauge where you're sort of um, taking it from because obviously it's sort of behind the, the flower. Um, mm -hmm. So they're there um, and then as the the spiral behind is going that way um, I'm just taking that um, loop back um, around mm -hmm. um, yeah so that then just holds everything together um, and that's the rose then done fab 
So you do it on the each side, so you it's almost a connector, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and obviously you can kind of do it how you how you want to. Yeah. Um, with the ring, um, it was a slight sort of variation. Um, I made the um, shank of the ring with the the green, yeah. um, and then started the spiral. Um, Pop the rows on um, and then with the edges of the the wire um, made the little leaves. I think they're so cute. I love the little leaves. It's little details, <laughs> isn't it? I just want to let you know that the one at the bottom of my screen, what a saucy offer, which you got the saw blades, 24 saw blades and the saw frame itself that should have been 16 pounds something that you got for 8.95. I've got a handful of these left. It's a massive saving huge percentage off these today 8.95 but do get in quickly on those please and it's imperative you're checking out your baskets on that as well fab so we've mm. created the flower connectors yep yeah i mean there was just one thing one more thing i wanted to kind of say um about those um, it's a sellout can, ah, there we go that what a saucy <laughs> offer is officially a sellout now so we're just going to pop on at the bottom the bundle, which is to create this look. It's the one that you got the one mil ten meters pink, the one uh, the 0.4 10 meters pink, the one mil in gold, and the one mil in green. 40 meters in total. You got the findings pack as well. You got three strands of gemstones, including fluorite, the rose quartz faceted, and the coated quartz. The price on that should have been £44.10. Huge discount on this today. Just £27.95. Should have been £44.20. But it's your last chance to get it now because it's very popular when I showed it to you earlier. We have had three sellouts on the show already today and this is going to be very similar. So please check out your baskets on this now. So we've done yeah. those beautiful connectors. Yeah. Um, so just a couple of things I wanted to, to mention about them. Um, see what size mandrels you've got um, and have a bit of a play. Mm -hmm. um, don't take one look at the rings that you make and think that's not going to be big enough as a flower um, because as you put the rings together, the outside will grow um, and the inside diameter will shrink. Um, fairly obviously when you kind of think about it. But I just thought I'd kind of lay that out. I don't know. Yeah, we can Doesn't see that. Show brilliantly. Um, but obviously, this um, the small flowers are actually seven, um, seven of the rings, seven of the um, eight millimeter rings, um, whereas the large flowers are fifteen um, of the uh, the ten millimeter rings. Um, so you can see the the kind of the difference in size really that that then creates, and that was really just dictated by what would hold the um, the gemstones then. I and love the this ring. <laughs> It's really comfortable and I didn't realise that the leaves themselves actually kind of lift up a little. They've got this really organic feel to them. I think that's really cool. Yeah, really yeah cool. well for that one actually that does help hold all of the jump rings in place as well to have them just kind of curving up the sides of the, the flower. Um, it all kind of helps to, to keep it all together. Fab, really keep fab. It locked. Comfy as well. Okay, so shall we um, have a go at the other? Um, the other necklace. Yes, let the one that reminds me of a designer. Hmm. Can you guess which one it is? Twenty-seven pounds ninety-five pence to get your hands on this kit. And how much did you have left over? Loads, loads did and loads. You? Um, I think um, all of the they're all over the place, but um, all of the beads I've got um, are actually including the stages and everything that I made. Um, wow! I've still got loads. You've got and loads, loads left. and loads. Barely touched the um, findings at all, wow. um, and yeah, I've got most of the the wire left as well. That um, is wonderful. Yeah. You have loads left over. I can't believe you've done the stages with all of those gems as well. Yeah, Fab. yeah. Um, so. For um, the other necklace, um, actually I did do a very similar piece um, in a bracelet, mm. um, primarily because I'd got two of the um, those round earring findings that we had for a yes. while, mm -hmm. and I thought, what can I do with them? So I put another loop the other end and actually sort of wrapped it in this way. Because I haven't got those anymore, but I thought, I'll make the same shape then. Um, but I wanted them 
reasonably large. Um, so even the jump ring maker wasn't going to create the mandrel that was going to be quite large enough. Um, so I um, went back to um, my trusty ring mandrel. <laughs> if I need to make a large, <laughs> it's always going to it's be, going the, to be the ring that. mandrel. Um, so actually, I'll use the, the gold. Um, so for these ones, all I did um, was to take a, um, a length of the wire. Um, this will be more than I need. You can actually do this off of the reel, um, but I just don't want to kind of bash it around. Um, and then all I took was right at the end, um, below the Z, um, just the largest I could get, hold it on, um, and just kind of loop that round um, a few times mm -hmm. um, to create as many as you want. Try to kind of keep them in the same, the same sort of place. Yeah. Um, it will spring out a little bit anyway. Um, and then once you take them off, you can sort of just sort of um, rejig re it a little bit so it's kind of the same, the same size. Um, at that point, it was always going to be too big to, um, to put into the, uh, the jump ring uh, pliers. Um, they can only go so far, they do a brilliant job, but um, I think that kind of stretches beyond their capabilities, really. Um, so all I then um, took was my... Um, my, uh, my pliers, I use my flush cutters, but these ones are to hand. Um, chop the end off so that's sort of fairly, um, fairly square, um, and then went in the same place um, and chopped the, the next one. And that's just kind of giving you the ring. Yeah. Um, I've got the flush cutters coming for you in a little bit. Excellent. They're always on when I'm on. Though, so. uh, are they? <laughs> you must be good luck <laughs> then. Yeah. Um, yeah, so. Um, Got the rings um, from that, um, so these were, were sort of flush, flush cut. Um, and then with each side, um, all I did, made a loop, both sides just back in. Like so, um, and that's giving you the basic shape. I think I've just sort of moved that out of shape, but that's giving you the basic shape then. Um, and then just because that's actually quite soft, um, I then just give them a bit of a hammer. Um, it helps with the wrapping because it kind of grips onto something that's a bit squarer. Um, but um, yeah, just give them a little bit of a, a, a hammering um, and strengthens it up as well. To add strength to this, you will want to use your hammer and your steel block today. You've got the steel block, which is weighty. If you haven't opened your basket yet, the postage and packaging on this alone is going to be worth it. Gemma Crow sent this in the post six pound fifty at Costa. You've also got your hammer here. These are coming together for you today. Your chasing hammer. We'll use this end here to add strength. It essentially changes the internal composition of the wire, which means that it will become harder, strengthier. It means that it's less likely to do things such as bend out of shape. You've also got this end here, which is great for giving a real vintage feel, adding texture, also almost graduating metal if that's what you wish to do. You've got the long metal ham, uh, the long wooden ham handle, which also um, it's handy because you can get right up close, but you can just use it at the end and let the weight of the hammer itself do the job. It also prevents against reverberation down the arm as well. New to GM, JM hammer and block today price is not £14.90. It would be if you bought it separately. But today, for just two ninety five dollars potion packaging for the whole day, £9.95. Get your hands on it right now. TK GC30, £9.95 for this. Thank you. Um, now, this one I haven't hammered, and you can actually see the difference. This is a little bit kind of bent out of shape because, because you're making quite large um, rings, um, it's more likely that they aren't going to be sort of totally flat. Mm. Um, so, actually, hammering it as well gives it um, that chance to kind of flatten down, um, or you can kind of flatten it so it's not sort of ridged around. Um, and then, with the two, um, in order to get to, to where I, I was at, um, I didn't want to just kind of sit them flat, so I just hooked them into each other. Um, so, one's sort of got one, oh, I can't gotta hold it. Um, one's coming out sort of um, one side, one's coming out the other side. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously all I needed to do was um, get those to, to stay together somehow. Um, in order to, um, to hold it whilst you're weaving, you can, um, it is possible to do, um, but I saved myself a little bit of effort um, by um, breaking into my um, 
gem setting toolkit mm -hmm. um, and nabbing the uh, the ring um, clamp. Clamp, okay. So that's all I'm using to hold them together. I've just started this one just because it's a little bit kind of slippy to start with. Um, but obviously there, if you're trying to kind of weave it, it is sort of moving around. Yeah. Um, so in order to hold it, just kind of decide how big you want that, um, that, uh, that eye to be. Um, and then pop it into the, the clamp and um, pop the chuck in the, the bottom and then it's not going to go anywhere. Um, it's also really handy because you're not sort of stressing your, your one hand um, trying to hold it all together. Yeah. Um, yes, you've got to hold it, but you're not um, having to kind of um, hold it tightly. Um, if you don't have this prong anything. setter, I suppose you could use maybe a bulldog clip or you know you get those freezer clips don't you for your peas in the freezer yeah yeah any like anything that, that might um sort of uh, clamp it together just hold it together so you can do without it but it will sort of wiggle about it's just a little bit more effort really um i just wanted to show it because i know the um, the gem setting toolkit was on this morning mm -hmm. um and it's just a an alternative use for the the bit of kit that you've got um don't just sort of think of them for gem setting you've got um you know you've got them there you might as well use them mm. um so um, what I've kind of started here, just trying to figure out which which way did I start? Oh, that's the front. Um, so you're looking at the front. That's fine. Um, so I've just done um, three wraps on the the pink, um, and then just moved that into place. Um, taken my wire through the the um, eye. Um, done three. Will be three. Um, when I've finished, yes, three wraps um, onto the the yellow, onto the gold wire. Um, so I was kind of thinking thinking in spring colours. So I'm thinking yellow rather than gold. Um, so onto the guard wire and then take it back through um, again um, and do your three wraps on, um, on back onto the pink wire. Um, and it, it's just a case of carrying on um, to do that. Keep them tight, keep them together. Um, so that's gone sort of across. Um, then you want one that's sort of just going to go straight around that wire. Um, and then I think oop, the next one need to check where I'm at with the, the numbers one two three yes I think so um, it's then um, going back over um, to to continue weaving um, and you just keep weaving um, like that uh, down that piece um, until you get to the middle bit mm -hmm. um, which is why you know what I want to, to weave at the end is actually hidden in here at the moment okay. But it doesn't matter because you're not weaving there. What I found with weaving, if um, if you start from a point, um, the wires naturally want to kind of tighten up together mm. um, to go down to the point. Um, the minute you sort of get over the, the widest point, they're wanting to to head in the other direction, so it's quite loose. Um, always like to use just one wire, mm. but in this case, I just got a neater finish if I did two halves. Um, so. If you wrap it right to the centre um, and then take it out of the, the mandrel, um, out of the uh, clamp, um, turn it around, and this is the one that's, that's just sort of a, and you'll see it is still a little bit sort of um, wiggly at the moment. Um, but then you can pop that in again, um, continue. take another bit of wire, and then start from the top here again mm -hmm. um, to get into the centre. Um, and the centre piece really is if, if you just sort of um, keep going until it's filled up um, and try and get the two ends of the wires on separate bits of the frame um, and that just tends to um, give you the right number of, of weaves in the right places um, to finish off. Um, and then all I did um, after I'd got those together um, was just go over it um, with my nylon jaw pliers um, and actually just sort of squidge it together um, which just locks that into place a little bit more um, so it isn't wiggling about too much. What you might find with all of that is that um, the, the curves have come um, a little bit out of true. Um, so what you can then do is just kind of pull them um, so you've got the same gaps um, on either oh, one right. again. Um, and for that piece, obviously, the middle piece, um, I, I made sure that two, two of the, the, um, the ends of the frame wires coming out um, one side was smaller than the other, um, so it started sort of curving upwards. Um, and obviously the, the overlap is greater um, to make a, a larger bit of weave in the middle. Okay. Um, and actually what you could do is then start sort of um, dangling some, um, some gemstones off of, the, the, end, off of the, the bottom of that as well. Oh yeah, that's a nice idea. So how did we finish this one off? 
Um, a, a little bit of, um, of fiddling, really, um, in terms of trying to work out which gemstones to put where yeah. um, and how they sort of sat. Um, I wanted it to sort of sit in a nice curve, um, which is why I've got the, just the jump ring um, between the three elements um, at the top, um, and then um, two, two of the little gemstones at the bottom. Um, then continued up with the sort of two strands um, out of the, the green. Um, oh yeah, I did sort of alternate the colours um, of the, the frames uh, as well as I was kind of going along. Um, and after the um, fluorite, um, I then just um, changed it into one one strand for the uh, uh, the chain at the bottom at the and back. You know what I love this. Is what I love about finishing details at the back, the S clasp, and just a single drop. Yeah, I, that's what I said, I'd, I'd love those. Um, so I had to use another little bit of a blingy stone there. Um, so uh, yeah. Really pretty. So with the earrings, we obviously used the same technique as the first design. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I was a bit confused, a bit um, undecided, I suppose, mm -hmm. um, as because obviously I'd got the um, the green wire um, at the back um, with the two ends coming out, and I didn't need two loops; it wasn't going anywhere. Um, so I just put a little spiral on the bottom. Um, you could just hide it all the way in if you wanted to, um, or you could make a little leaf um, out of it. Like it, on the ring? Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to um, sort of come out in the opposite way as the other one, but it does hold everything together a little bit better. Yeah. So you could actually put a leaf sort of at the side if you wanted to, um, but I just thought I'd go for a bit of a spiral, really. Love a good spiral. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a spiral. Now, on the... Um, the second design that we learned, we used the flush cutters to create the loops themselves, didn't they? Yeah. Talk to me about why you and everyone else out there seems to just adore the flush cutters so much. Um, <laughs> because they cut flush. Um, yeah, normally what you'll find um, with the ordinary cutters um, is they kind of pinch the wire. Um, so what you end up with is two bits of wire with a V shape mm. on them, um, which is fine for um, your general kind of cutting of wire. What I find, um, whether I'm doing jump rings or whether I'm kind of finishing um, a piece of wire, what I want is a nice kind of straight um, edge. Um, it's actually a lot less sharp um, as well. It won't catch on anything, but it's a lot less likely to catch on anything. Um, and I did try these out last, last week um, and there just wasn't even any kind of feeling of burring, feeling of sharpness. No. Um, so it is that, you know, that absolute kind of flush um, cut um, so it does meet um, or if you're using kind of the, the weaving wire yeah. um, you can get right in um, to, to the, the sort of crevices Looks. really get it right in close and cut it flush um, and then you haven't got anything sort of catching or just sort of um, making you itch really um, yeah scratching you scratchy yeah it's fab for if you are interested in chainmail don't forget chainmail tomorrow um, with the using these for that again once you have your jump ring it locks into place yeah. which means that once your design is made there's not going to be any falling out of, of the rings or losing no. shape because it's just flush it just you can actually hear them click can't you yeah. when you create pieces um, and chainmail designs with this they are one of our most popular tools and I've got a few for you today not as many as I'd like but I've got a chance for some of you to own these today. These are your designer flush cutters. They're just a player of pliers, but they do a professional job. MKBN69 price today, 29 pounds and 95 pence. A low quantity now, because I already had people purchasing them. 34 of these left in stock going down constantly how much easier have these made life i know that people uh, guest designers of course when they're on sometimes we won't have any of these left in stock and they'll be using them and we get so many people messaging in oh wait wait are the flush cutters back in stock where do i get them are you having them on the show today and you have to say 
no, sorry. But the guest designers love them so much. They don't yeah. want to just use the, the normal cutters all the time. They want to use these. Yeah. But a lot of the time we have them out of stock. Why is it, why are they just so adored? Yeah, well, I mean, I think they do the job that you want them to do, um, as I've all mentioned. Um, I think the, the other two points to note really um, is they go through the wire so easily it's like butter yeah um last week i think i got um i think it was 1.25 i couldn't find any 1.5 wire um in the drawer yeah um that i was cutting and there was no effort involved really that you know they're de designed to be able to kind of get through um nice and easily um and obviously the handles are, are nice kind of comfortable um ergonomic handles as well mm. um so they're actually nice to to hold nice to use um so uh, yeah, I mean it's just you know all round they do the job you want and it feels nice whilst it whilst, whilst, you're, you're, doing uh, whilst it. you're doing those jobs. And especially if you are doing something again like chainmail, and I'm talking about it a lot, but these for it. If you're doing chainmail, of course for a bracelet you might need 200, 250, maybe even 300 just for a bracelet jump rings to cut, keep cutting. It can get quite yeah. strenuous on the hands quite quickly. You don't have that problem with these because not only are you not tra forcing it like sometimes especially on blunt pliers cutters you kind of have to yeah and hear that click with these it slices through so easily the handles comfortable takes a lot of stress and effort out for a professional finish but 11 is all we have left in stock and it's three six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve in baskets right now nine in quantity kate barbara jennifer sandra tara nicole new customer sarah Anne, angela wendy jane new telephone bidder again you're gonna have to be quick because all those names i've just read out you're either on the phone or it's in your basket i read out over seven i read out over six this is fastest finger first but i've just read out your name it's imperative that you click out. Thank you, Kate and Barbara, for checking out then. The rest of you who I just mentioned, please, please do. It's better to let you know, isn't it, how far and how long you've got left. I've got five, and what I would say is there is a slight queue on the phone. So that means there'll be a slight time delay with that. I might actually currently have less than five. Thank you, John and Lou, for just checking out then. Very, very kind of you. Five left, and how many, how many would you say we've got with it in the baskets? 11, 10. Yeah. And four left in stock. <laughs> 29 pounds, 95 pence. Once it's gone, it's gone. Two left and how many? Oh, about eight, nine. About eight or nine. Two of you with this, 29 pounds, 95 pence. Who's gonna be the last two? MKBN69, click to check out. Thank you so much for showing us those absolutely beautiful designs. Can you give us a little inkling as to what to expect for our second designer inspiration um i think i've already said it's copper there are um some tiny uh, copper seed beads in there um so i've done a little bit of work um with those um so uh, yeah it it should be an interesting um piece i think it's kind of a bit in terms of um techniques it's a bit of a fusion sort of style i think okay Go on, let us have a look. Go on, mm. Teresa, go on. This is just one of the pieces. It reminds me of a coat of armor for some reason. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of that? It's fab, isn't it? I love it, and we're gonna find out exactly how to make this. And I love that pendant as well. You know, when yes. you're going, exciting. <laughs> um, now, sell out on the flush cutters sorry if you missed it such a shame but don't worry i have loads of other bargains coming up for you including my pick of the day opal strand in the break i am going to try and find some sort of dark eerie corner so that you can really get a feel for this 0800 644 655 is your number to call later on in the next 30 minutes that opal will be coming for less than 50 pounds way less i cannot wait do you love opal i absolutely adore opal i'm gonna have to show you this strand <laughs> it is delicious 
don't eat gemstones. Have a nice break. After this, I have got our team picks. I'll see you after this.